Welcome to the Exida Alarm Management video series. I'm Todd Stauffer, Director of Alarm Management here at Exida. In this session, you'll learn about a key part of the alarm rationalization process called alarm objective analysis. Specifically, we'll see how alarm objective analysis helps you to determine what alarms are valid and necessary versus which ones you don't need. You'll learn how to eliminate nuisance alarms, and you'll see how to safely reduce the number of alarms that are presented to the operator. Let's begin by talking about what an alarm is supposed to be. The ISA 18.2 standard on alarm management defines an alarm as an audible and or visible means of indicating to the operator, notice the emphasis on operator. The target of the alarm system is the operator, not the process control engineer or maintenance technician. Therefore, all of the information in the alarm system must be easily understood, useful, and actionable to the operator. An alarm should also indicate an equipment malfunction, process deviation, or abnormal condition, which means that something is wrong. Alarms should not be used for expected conditions or events. And last but not least, an alarm requires a response. If the operator does not need to perform a corrective action, like opening a valve or turning on a pump, then the point should not be an alarm. Alarm overload and nuisance alarms are oftentimes caused by quote-unquote alarms that don't really meet the criteria for being an alarm. They don't represent an abnormal condition or require that the operator take an action. The purpose of alarm rationalization is to ensure that each alarm meets the criteria for being an alarm as defined in ISA 18.2 and in your alarm philosophy document. Now you might be wondering what is alarm rationalization? Here's an overview. During rationalization one reviews each alarm documenting its basis and its design. Rationalization is a multi-step process where the steps can be executed consecutively or in a phased approach. This tutorial focuses on one of the first steps of the rationalization process, alarm objective analysis. Alarm objective analysis includes discussion of the following. What scenarios could trigger or cause the alarm? The potential consequences if the operator does not respond? the corrective actions that should be taken by the operator to prevent the consequences, the method for confirming that the alarm is real, and the purpose or design intent. It focuses on confirming that alarms are legitimate and meaningful. Therefore, it's very effective at identifying alarms that are not necessary and helping to define only the minimum set of alarms needed to keep the process safe and within normal operating limits. Let's take a look at a real life example. A reactor high temperature condition. To ensure the production of sellable product, the reactor product temperature must be maintained at 125 degrees. The reaction is slightly exothermic, so the agitator must be kept running to distribute the heat evenly and to ensure proper mixing. If the reactor reaches 150 degrees, then byproducts will be produced, which makes the product unsellable. In the original design, both a high and a high high temperature alarm are configured. I'm now going to demonstrate how to conduct alarm objective analysis for the high temperature alarm using the SIL alarm tool. To begin rationalization, we'll select the high temperature alarm from the list of alarms that are in our master alarm database, which was created by importing the alarm settings from the control system. We begin with a clean slate and will document all of the fields associated with alarm objective analysis. Let's start by defining the most likely causes for the alarm. We must be specific. Defining that the cause is high temperature is not very helpful. We want to know what could cause the alarm to occur to make sure that it represents an abnormal condition. If the cause is an expected condition, then it probably should not be an alarm. We next analyze the potential consequences of inaction, focusing on the direct and immediate result of the abnormal situation, not what could happen after a series of failures. Another way to think about it is what consequences can the operator prevent directly by taking the appropriate corrective action? 
This consequence assessment is different from a process hazard analysis or PHA. In a PHA, one is after the ultimate consequence, which is what could happen if all layers of protection fail. In alarm rationalization, we are only interested in the direct and immediate consequence of failing to respond to the alarm. As shown in the figure, the ultimate consequence would be the chemical release or explosion, while the direct consequence of the operator failing to respond to the alarm would be the trip of the safety instrumented system. Another important thing about consequences, if you can't define what the consequence is, then probably there's no need for the alarm. Also, if the only consequence of the operator failing to respond is the creation of another alarm, then chances are both alarms are not necessary. For our reactor high temperature alarm, the consequence of inaction would be the creation of a secondary reaction leading to unsellable product or loss of product. Next, we want to define and document the design intent or purpose for the alarm. For our reactor example, the purpose is to prevent a high temperature from occurring as this would lead to unsellable product. One of the most important tasks during alarm rationalization is to define what the operator's corrective action should be in response to the alarm. When we speak of corrective action, we don't mean just acknowledging the alarm. We want actions that would correct the abnormal situation, like starting a pump or opening a valve. As mentioned earlier, if we can't define what the corrective action should be, then the point should likely not be an alarm. If you've ever heard the expression, the cure is sometimes worse than the disease, then you'll understand why it's important to document how to confirm that the alarm is real. No one wants to shut down production, but if that's what's required to protect the safety of the plant and its people, then the operator should be empowered to do so. Documenting other process measurements or conditions that the operator can use as confirmation will help them take the necessary action and determine which cause initiated the alarm. Alarm rationalization can be thought of as a knowledge capture process since key participants include experienced senior operators. A side benefit of rationalization is that the information captured can be made available to all operators, including junior operators, to help them respond to alarms more effectively and consistently. This operator alarm response aid is called an alarm response manual, alarm response procedure, or alarm help in some control systems. Now that we've completed our review of the high alarm, let's turn our attention to the high high temperature alarm. When we reviewed the cause, consequence, and corrective action for the high high alarm, we found no differences from the high alarm. Thus, we do not need this alarm and it can be disabled. For the high high alarm to be valid, either the cause would need to be different, the consequence would need to be different, or the corrective action would need to be different in kind or degree. We hope you've learned some of the benefits of alarm rationalization, in particular how consideration of an alarm's cause, consequence, and corrective action can help you determine which alarms are valid and necessary versus those that can be eliminated. For additional information on alarm management, alarm rationalization, or tools for alarm rationalization, please visit www.exida.com. Thanks for listening.